All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. As always, I'm Andrew. And I'm here to help, to listen, to guide. Guys, it's Agony Arts 2.0. Dum dum dum, the sequel. So, yeah, guys, what we're basically going to do for this one, it's quite simple. Uh, to be honest, we didn't have enough time to reach out to our lovely listeners, so we picked some questions that people had put to agony aunts on the internet and we're going to take those questions and answer them to the best of our ability essentially yeah um you know we're not going to ridicule but we are sort of going to ridicule so do you want to go first biggie yeah, baby I don't mind. right so in all fairness i stole this from colleen nolan's agony well, don't give, well don't admit it <laughs> i mean all right, no, what sorry. kind of what kind I of took, thief goes I, around telling people where they got stuff? All right, sorry, I, I got this from our email inbox. Fucking better. Dear Crossing Swords, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a man. It's funny, my... it's funny that Colleen Rooney goes by Crossing Swords, isn't it? Do Coincidental with that? Not uh-huh. Colleen Rooney. It's not Wayne Rooney's missus they were writing to. It's <laughs> Colleen Nolan. Oh, the Nolan sisters, bird, the yeah. loose woman. Well, I don't know. I've never done agony aunts. Yeah, but you'd, have you'd you have ever heard of a have... wag being an agony aunt? They love to think they know their stuff. And to be fair, you'd have thought doing the research for this, I might have come across enough agony aunts to know who's who. <laughs> but right, so dear crossing swords, I'm a man in my forties, and I was married for fifteen years until nine months ago, when my wife said that she wanted out and and left the fam- and he left the family home. And I left the family home, so that's very poorly written. Uh, we had He's to... devastated. Leave the man alone. He's going through a fucking divorce and a breakup. And what, you think he's going to write perfectly because he's going to sit down and plan his thing? He's got shit going on in his life. Leave him alone. We have two children, aged 10 and 13. Things have been bad for a while. She was distant, bad-tempered, and then I found out she'd been having an affair. While I was willing to try and work on things, not least because of our children, she was clear that the marriage was over it's been a tough few months but i focused on work and i have the kids 50 percent of the time which is great my ex is still seeing this other man but things don't sound good my kids say they are always arguing and falling out i've only realized sounds like she's the problem i've only realized since leaving what i put up with during our time together i was always trying to keep her happy trying to anticipate her moods and avoid meltdowns and she was angry so much of the time I'm not seeing anyone, but I'm happier now things are falling into some kind of routine. What's thrown a spanner into the works is that last week when she dropped off the kids, she was very nice, sweet, interested in what I was doing, and even told me I was looking well and handsome. She asked if I wanted to come over and have dinner with her when I was dropping the kids back, but I'm suspicious about what she's up to. Is she being nice because her relationship is in trouble? It's confusing because I do still love her. Ah, oh, first of all, I think we should give her a mention to the fact that uh, you can be happier on your own. Absolutely. You really can. You don't have to be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship if it makes you miserable. Absolutely. And it sounds like this woman was making your life a misery. She was a bitch. Let's put that Absolutely. out Absolutely. She may be the mother of your children, but that doesn't make her any less of a cunt. No, let's hope your kids don't, invo- don't, don't get any of her traits. Absolutely. So, unless she's hot. In which case, it's like they get the looks. No, but then that's weird. Why would, why he, that why weird? would he want his kids to be hot? He doesn't, I do. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Jake, what would you advise this man do? Steer clear, bro. Steer clear. For what reason? You've got out once. You were happier. You know you're happier. Don't even go back. Don't even think about it. For us, quite frankly, this whore was getting bang. She was getting pounded to dust by another man while you were married to her. If you, if you, she would. left you for him thinking the grass was green, and she's now realised how amazing a man you are. Fuck her. Find if you else. went to a pizza shop and they they kept making you ill, and you kept having like really dodgy time of it, and you didn't really think about it, but then after you stopped going there, you were like, actually, do you know I'm what? Not Ill anymore. I'm not <laughs> ill. Like, oh, I, it, it was them, and you can see mm. so clearly. And then they were like, hey man, do you want a free pizza? You wouldn't be like, do you know what, though, I do really like their pizza. You'd be like, well, no, that makes me ill. I'm not, I'm just going to, there's lots of other pizza out there. I'm going to well, go and go somewhere else. You say that, Jake. No, good pussy's first good pussy. All, look, I was going to say, look. first of all, I know what you're like with pizza. Second of all, I know what you're like with women and you have zero Bro, willpower. Bro, no, do you know what is so worrying is, like, recently at work, right, we, we, we went round to this woman's house. Oh, not, no. not like that. <laughs> I wish. Right, we went round to this woman's house and she was hot. 
first right out there. She was a she was a very attractive woman. Okay. And she had it all essentially out. It wasn't, but it was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know the kind of outfits I'm talking about? Yeah. And she was like, you know, bouncing around and moving around and bending over. And I was like, when we got when when I got out afterwards, I was like, fuck me, I'm so weak to attractive women. I'm like, I'd have cleaned her apartment if she asked. <laughs> Honestly, if she'd have lifted her top up and flashed me, I'd have got the toothbrush out and got behind the fucking fridge. I, I'm so weak. <laughs> to attractive women it's I could do it I think I could do a stretch Guys, in prison I think I'm going to be quite honest now it's not even just attractive women Jake's weak to women in general it's true my standards are shockingly low <laughs> yeah this woman could have been a munter for all we know <laughs> yeah but they've got to work a bit harder if they're ugly do you know what I mean she'd have had to let me she'd have had to let me cop a feel <laughs> alright fair enough this woman if she'd have just flashed him I'd have been I'd have, I could do a stint in prison so, I think so, uh, anyway worry. we're getting off track here guys I think the overall Feedback to this poor man in his forties is stay the fuck away from her. Yeah, what would you what would you say? I would say that well, like I said before, she had an affair. She thought she had something better. Clearly, she didn't realise what she had in this man. Well, that he put um, up with her shit. Yeah, I imagine that's what's happened. Is this other yeah. bloke's not taking her shit? Basically, that's what it sounds like. He's not willing to. And quite frankly, you shouldn't live your life under someone else's thumb. So enjoy your life, enjoy your children, and hopefully, you find someone else who's better for you. Yeah. I would go for that. All right, you doing the next one? Yeah, I've got I've got quite a, a bit of an odd one next. Okay, um, shoot. So it says, "Dear Crossing Swords," as they all do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, go on. I have been dating Leon, quote unquote. So that we're not going to call the man out. Do you know what I mean? Especially oh, after this shit. I've been dating Leon for a few months. He's smart, cute, ambitious, caring, and a great kisser. Hello, oh. Leon. Leon's got it popping. What are you saying, Leon? <laughs> this boy's on fire. And he has a fantastic sense of humour. Yeah, because that's what she's really interested in. Huge dick. Massive. <laughs> I'm assuming. The problem, you're wondering, with this great kisser, this great guy with his huge dick and his funny laugh, he um, he gives new meaning to the phrase got milk. Leon still has the remains of the first gallon of milk he ever purchased when he moved into his apartment. What? He had overestimated the amount of milk he would consume, and before he knew it, he had a gallon in his fridge, and it was three weeks past its expiration date. Time passed, and still it remained there. Soon, it was six months old, and such a novelty. Abby, Leon, oh sorry, Abby. <laughs> Abby well was the original. <laughs> let, let me try again. <laughs> Time passed and it was it still remained there. Soon it was six months old and novelty. Crossing swords. Leon has kept this container of milk through two roommates, three girlfriends, seven jobs and two refrigerators. It will soon be five years since he's so had it. So wait a second. This guy, this Abby, got a new fridge. No, no, Leon. And then passed it over to the new fridge. Yeah. So basically, when Leon moved into his apartment, he, he thought, I, I need this much milk. He got a lot of milk. He didn't use it. Then he had a gallon of milk that was past this expiry date. And it's become such a novelty that he's swapped it over into the new fridge. He's kept it even when roommates have come and gone, when girlfriends have come and gone. This guy is hung like a fucking horse and has a gallon of milk that's almost five years out of date. So, so what's their question? Well, they don't really have a question. It's more just, uh, you know, what do I do? I, I don't really know what you can do. This person seems quite dead set. What this milk's like, going to the grave. What do you think it? would happen if you, if you threw the milk out? I, I, I don't really know. I, I mean... It would worry if they had an angry reaction. I'd probably be concerned. You know, why are you so concerned about this gallon of milk? <laughs> um, so would you leave it? I mean, unless it was milk his dad had bought him before dying or something like that. No, even then, bro, that's weird. Yeah, probably. Even then, that's yeah, weird. I, I mean, I certainly haven't kept hold of anything like that. So no, I, I mean, yeah, it's concerning. He's holding on to it. I'd probably try and have. A discussion, discussion about it and say like maybe he's holding on to it as like suicide. It's taking up valuable space in the fridge. Maybe sort of it's like suicide milk and the hope in the idea that one day he might get really ill, terminally so. It's looking grim. He's like, "Fuck it, pop the milk. I'm going out in no, style." You wouldn't know because it, it's not drinkable at that point. It'd be solid. Well, you eat it. No, I, I, there's no way to defend it, really, is there? No, it's so fucked up. Well, I would say if he's not willing to bin the milk, you bin him. I mean, five years though. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth binning him. Look, I think. Well, no, but like, what? I just would like to know what his logic is behind holding on to this milk. Yeah, I'd quite like to know what his logic is. No, like, I get it. Might be funny. Like you hit the six month point. Oh, what am I like? The milk's still there. 
but then you throw it out. Yeah, I wonder if he's the kind of dickhead that's like brings you on. He's like, oh, smell that. <laughs> In which case, I would bin him off. Oh, thank it's gone off. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, if it's just a genuine, I don't know. I think I don't know. I'm not sure. I would dump him for it. It depends. It's how weird. Stro- it would depend on how strongly he defended the milk. I think you're underestimating how hung this guy is. <laughs> she, she's getting pounded to dust. <laughs> She doesn't even care about the milk at that point. No. Right, fair enough. Well, no, just well, b- b- well, so what's you've, your... been, you've been him off. Well, if he was very adamant on keeping this milk, I'd consider it. What about getting... Like, because uh... the problem is, that's a dangerous attitude on life to have because it starts with the milk and then he becomes a hoarder. What about a really weird compromise where you get like a little mini fridge, you know, one of those like cooler fridges that you can put in the cupboard out of the no, way like under the sink why this milk it's too late I sm- well it smelled too much if you left it out <laughs> My... sm- it's... <laughs> this is the thing I can't imagine a situation where you don't open that fridge and smell it yeah nor do I but, but my point is, if you get a smaller fridge, keep it in this cupboard no, out of the way. Jay, he gets to keep Jay, the milk and your fridge remains untainted. This is now moved into a third fridge. <laughs> and not just any third fridge, a fridge we've purchased for the simple idea of keeping this milk as preserved as it can be. Like, where, where does it stop? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what, when it stops. tell you move it into the freezer. We well, you want to freeze the milk. So you're still willing to keep the milk at this point, if it means that much to him and you like him that much. If it made sense as to why he was keeping it, which I'm very doubtful about. But you're open to it. You're open to keeping the milk. If it really meant that much to him. Freezer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a compromise. It's good to know that you're willing to compromise. Yeah. I'm sure your fiancé must be very happy. <laughs> yeah, babe, you put your... No, no, no. No, no, no it's not like into that. <laughs> right, next... Next uh, person right Next, dear crossing swords. Dear crossing swords. Please don't, please don't fuck up like I did. <laughs> My husband and I are both in our early 30s and have been together for four years. Recently, he admitted to me that a year into our marriage, he slept with another man. It only happened one time and he says he bitterly regrets it, as he felt guilty as he has felt guilty ever since. He said he was drunk on a stag weekend and blames the booze for what happened. By the way, I just want to specify, this was a woman writing this. I thought you were going to specify what happened on, um, on stag dues that you've been on. <laughs> <laughs> the reason he finally told me was because this Gil. guy, a friend of a friend, had been in touch with him, wanting to meet up, and I think he was worried I might find out what happened. My husband is the sort of guy who does most things to excess, and it's got him into trouble in the past, although he's settled down a lot since we got married. It's what makes him interesting and attractive, but he takes it too far sometimes. I'm so hurt over what he did, but I still want our marriage to work because I do love him. I don't know how to handle it or if I can actually move on from it as much as I want to. I'd love your opinion. Do you know what? For me, I think um, um, my observation is that people think they're upset by these things. And they are. I'm not saying they're not. But I think the thing that does more damage than the act itself is the deception of the act. Yeah. Now, I I accept that if he'd have come out and said straight away, look, I slept with someone else, she, they might not have got married. Um, well, it was into their marriage. Oh right, well there you go. I mean, I I don't know. I think first of all, can I just say I've been on a few stag do's. Never have you got drunk enough to start fucking each other. (laughs) No, the furthest I ever got was on a stag do. I woke up holding the stag's hand. That's 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 never like been a point where I'm like, (laughs) how drunk did you get? I got so drunk I had like dicks in both hands. Honestly, it was mental. (laughs) What a stag! I was getting done from both. (laughs) A bit roasted. I was getting... <laughs> the boys were... my, le- my little legs didn't even touch the ground. They just spun me round whilst they went. <laughs> the boys were patting me to death. <laughs> <laughs> what I like as well is it. There's this kind of like unwritten implication to for me that basically on every gay stag and and Hindu, <laughs> they're all just sexually charged <laughs> well, the thing was, orgies. I, I'm not actually sure whether this is a gay couple or a straight couple. No, I assume it's a straight couple, and he's had a bit of a, a by turn. Yeah. But but I mean. <laughs> The thing is, like you say, because I've I've been on a couple of stag do's, there's never been a moment in it 
um, where I've gone, I can see this going. <laughs> <laughs> Next we had a oh. <laughs> It's not even come close. <laughs> no, no point if you've been like, right, Eiffel Tower time, guys. <laughs> Back to my room, guys. All G time. You know I mean? like, Clothes not required. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, let's just get it out of the way. Terrible excuse. I was drunk. It was a stag do. Things were happening. Next we Balls were flying. <laughs> 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 I was helping him tie his shoelace. It fell in my what, mouth. Do also, you know do I mean? you think if the sex was better with that guy, that he would have been, that he wouldn't have felt as guilty because he enjoyed it? Do you think maybe he just didn't enjoy it? I don't really know because I think the thing she would need to drill down into with her husband is why did you have sex with a man first of all? I think that to a degree makes it worse. Even though it potentially means less to him, it could also potentially mean more, more. to her. Um, no, but more to him as well. Is it indicative oh, I see. of is the it, fact there's... Is she a beard or is he bi? Yeah. Um, and I think if he's then bi, it makes it even more complicated. Do you think? Yeah, I think if it was genuinely just a drunk mistake, which again, having been on stack or on nights out in general with a lot of guys, being very drunk, we've never got close to banging each other. <laughs> um, no, although I do, I do remember doing the... Um... Uh, doing a doing a game of uh, truth, uh, not truth, but there, spin the bottle, and yeah. it landed on me and another guy like three times, and everyone was like doing that thing with like, oh, it's not, I'm gonna play, and we were like, fuck it, show you how to do, it. we'll lead yeah, the way, well, we've all and done we went that. for it, and just, like, but I didn't then do no, that. No, but and the thing go, is, we went this for guy it, upstairs and, and then what happened was, I pulled, you know, we pulled away, and look, news flash, I'm not into men, yeah. I wasn't really into the kiss, but I was like. I figured if I went in for the kiss, it's like a it's like an early plant the seed so that later down the line I can really go for it with one of these girls, right? Yeah. He we pulled away and he was like, "No man, it felt like you weren't really in it." And I was like, "No shit." <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you could put more. It's like that. no shit. <laughs> no, but it's like like there was a situation I was in once where me and a friend had a chance of having a fun time with a female. And one of the things she wanted us to do to sort of get her in the mood was she wanted us to kiss. And we just sort of looked at each other and was like, well, sex is sex, isn't it? So we kissed yeah, each make other. Yeah, you, you plant but the seed for the later payoff. Having my worry is, how far would that have gone if it went further? Would she have then been like, all right, start giving hands? I'll tell you this. Given, you know I mean? like, given that we've established my weakness for women, you could see yourself, how far might I have gone? Can you? By the way, it wasn't me and Jake. We weren't in a potentially. No, I mean, on on, on on all fours, cocking both ends, being like, <laughs> "I'm doing this for the pussy," and I'm still so straight, like 100. percent It's a bit like when men are in prison, isn't it? And they're like banging away. Oh, you get free other. pass in prison. But <laughs> do you know that this thing about prison is? There's like a a, um, a stretch, like it, it's over a certain amount. Like if you're only doing like I think is it five years or four years, if you're doing like anything less. And you you fuck another guy or you or you get fucked. You're it's like gay. it's gay. But if you're doing like a four or five year stretch or more, it's not. No. Which is an interesting way to look at it. I always <laughs> like that that sort of like. Oh, it's just so weird. It's just men so are so weird. So basically, what you're saying is we're all only five years away from being gay. Being gay. <laughs> or bi. Yeah. From from going bi. Um, but no, lot. Like, Turns out you're just one horny girl away. You're not even five years. So. <laughs> I just think um, with with this poor person, um, it needs to be a serious discussion about what the fact he slept with another man actually means. Um, well, a discussion with himself as much as anything. Yeah, but I think she needs to have some level of understanding of the actual thing itself, just saying it was a drunken mistake, particularly when it means he's going the other way from what he's always been makes it an even bigger issue because having an affair in general or one night stand um, usually means you're lacking something in your relationship I think that is whether it's through fear or through whatever it was um, I think well done to him for finally being honest with her and telling her what happened even if he tried to defend it poorly you know it does deserve credit to come out mm. and be honest the only way a relationship can survive and move forwards is through honesty 
Yeah, and I think when someone's cheated, the number one question has to be: Can the person that it can that they was cheat the again? Victim, oh, can they trust them going forward? Yeah, and I think probably by and large, the answer is usually no. I I would say in um, this circumstance, it it sounds like yes. It sounds like the guy. It would be dependent on what that experience meant to him. It sounds like it. It's de- sort of dependent on his willingness to take things to the extreme, and if he has calmed down in that, mm. and and you know, aging will do that. A steady, a steady mm. partner will do that. Then perhaps maybe you can trust him. I don't. You know, I'm, I'm, But would you then let him go on another stag too? Well, now that we know what happens on stag do's. <laughs> We've been going on the wrong stag do's. I thought stag do's were just... No, we haven't, Jake. We've not been going on the wrong stag do's. I thought they were just like a good fun. You get together, you have a laugh, you know. You were a bit of banter. Apparently there's some cocks I can involve. <laughs> That's the thing. You're like, oh, we've been going to the wrong... No, we've been going to the right stag do's, Jake. Do you not get, do you not get a bit worried when you're like, oh, we're going on this... Oh no, I suppose you don't, it's a stag do, you're planning for other things. I was going to say, you don't get a bit worried when you're like, you're back at the room and suddenly the guy pulls out a, a bottle of lube. <laughs> <laughs> but then I suppose you're, you're expecting things to happen on a stag do anyway, just not with each other. <laughs> yeah, well I suppose if you're single, yeah. Um, if I saw, the problem is, if I saw a single guy in his 20s rocking out a bottle of lube, I'd be like, what sort of women have you been with that are that dry, you need... I don't think they're interested. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think um, you may be able to move forward, but it's whether you can trust that person. I, I think I think you've got to give them a chance. And do you know what? I would be. It would be very tough for her, and I realise that it might not be doable. But I'd be very tempted to have a conversation with the guy who he cheated on her with, mm. and just to say, do you know what? what did happen that you know he said because obviously he said it's a drunken night it's mm. a mistake whatever but i want to know was it building from when you were sober you know was there something yeah. was it more was planned? There a moment? yeah was there a, was it just a, a silly moment that, yeah. that came and went or was there something a bit more premeditated I know, about but it? i just logically because that's how i'd know then being a straight man that even with you and say ash my two closest friends I can't Can I just say we we do not want to have sex. I, I can't conceive of, and we've all been pretty drunk around each other. I, I, there's never been a moment where I've looked at you or Ash and gone, "It's time." <laughs> no, there's mean? there's, <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been really really drunk. Um, Good times. Yeah, I've seen your asshole though. You have seen my asshole, but that, that was for purely comedic reasons. As sex often is. <laughs> I don't know what sort of sex you're having, but my mostly problem. the humiliating kind. Fair enough. Very emasculating. Fair enough. But sex. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, your question now, Jay. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to move past that. Right. So um, I'm going to go for this one. This one I quite like. It's a bit funny. Um, Dear Crossing Swords, um, I've always woken up before my wife. A few months ago, uh, I got up and made her a cup of tea. Now she expects this as a matter of course and taking it for granted that I will always have a cup of tea for her in bed. How do I let her know that this was just a one-time thing? The, the, the issue is with that, it can't have just been a one-off. He must have started doing it consistently. Um, unless he literally did it the first day, the next day he didn't. And she was like, like, where's my tea? Where's my tea? Um, so if that happened... I mean, at the same time... He should have cut much, it out. Yeah, is, it's not is it that much of a hardship making your missus a cup of tea? Making anyone a cup of tea, but your um, wife. I mean, for your wife. Normally, like, for example, I currently live with my partner and her mum. If I get up before them, which sometimes I do, like, for example, when um, I was off with my depression, I had trouble sleeping for quite a while, so normally I'd wake up at, like, four or five in the morning and get up. I they would normally get up because my partner was still working about six in the morning. I would get their coffee stuff ready, and as soon as I heard them stirring, I would flick the kettle off, flick yeah, the pot and on, put it on. So um, I mean, I just think he's being a bit of a little bitch, to be honest. Oh, he's absolutely being a dick. Um, he's absolutely being a dick. Like the 
the idea that he's gone this long being that selfish and then one day he's like, I'm going to do something moderately nice. Not yeah. that big a deal, no. just a nice little cup of if tea. If it was like going down on her every morning or something like yeah, that. Yeah, different story. Where it's a bit more time consuming and there's effort involved. So, I mean, you're sitting in yeah. a meeting like, I don't know. And she's not uh. doing it. <laughs> Turn to the camera and do her face. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, ladies. I can hear the waves crashing already. Well, no. Uh, in my defence, this is the point where you're too tired. You've overworked it, lethargic. and you're in the, you're in the meeting, and you're like, yeah, like Jake. What do you think? Like, I don't know the way I do that. I don't know. I'm getting so many reasons as to why you're sick. <laughs> tongue game is weak. I get tired easy. What can I say? <laughs> Does your tongue cramp by any chance? It might. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think? Do you think this was just being a bell end and needs oh, to... Absolutely. Because, bro, make your wife a cup of tea. Like, for fuck's yeah. sake, it's not that hard. She shouldn't have to be, like, getting on your back about it. Yeah. You should just make her a fucking cup of tea. If you wake up before her every day, you know she likes a cup of tea every morning. Yeah. Make her a fucking cup of tea. Stop being a bell jock. Yeah. Also, in a relationship, you should think about your partner. And it's not a big deal. Fucking grow up. But part of me is tempted to sort of, like, just for the sake of, of being a little hips to break just to kind of back back the husband and be like your husband is not nice for you let it go accept what he did he did a nice thing and don't be so demanding but I can't say it with any conviction no. he is just being a bell drop <laughs> just make your wife a cup of tea man it's not that fucking hard no it's not I don't know how like unless he has to go fair enough this is the only exception where I would say you can you can get on her back for expecting it if you have to wake up in the morning, harvest the tea leaves, um, you know, compress them down, drain them to get the tea out of them, and and you know, if you have to start a fire to pour the water on, you have to go out and get fucking firewood, and you have to like stoke the fire Where does this and keep it going. In? Well, I'm just look, just playing devil's, just playing devil's advocate. I'm just trying some in a cave in some rural India where they grow tea leaves. I'm, I'm just saying, if that were the case. I could understand his issue. I could understand his grievance. But if he just lives in like a, a, a normal suburban life or whatever, <laughs> like make your wife a cup of tea, mate. Yeah. I think we agree on that. That's hard not to. And you'd have to be massively... If you disagree with that, message us. Also, you're a dick. <laughs> right. Dear Crossing Swords, my wife and I have been married for 36 years. We are very happy together and have four grown-up children and six grandchildren. Just over a year ago, a lady moved in next door to us. She's a widow aged 56. My wife and I have got along really well with her and are pleased to know her. <coughs> My wife will often go out shopping with this woman and before lockdown they went to bingo together and also had occasional day trip outings. My wife has now told me that it's, air quotes, it's n no reflection on me that she's having a sexual relationship with this woman next door. That took a turn. I know. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't that surprised by this when my wife told me because over the past few months I've had a hunch that it was more than a friendship. My question is, should I just ignore it and leave things as they are or should I tell my wife this friendship has to stop? It hasn't affected us in any way. We still have a healthy sex life and we get along really well. My wife said she told me because she didn't want me to find out any other way. I'd appreciate your advice. Ask to join in, bro. <laughs> After what? Turns out attracted the widow is. I think that's quite a bizarre situation, but for me, if that's happened, one, it's very likely this woman's bisexual anyway. Um, she's probably been a sexually adventurous woman because she must be in what her sixties at this point. If they've been together thirty six, it's years. got ringings of um, um, uh, Ross in Friends. <laughs> well that she's been a lesbian all along that she's well no you know that she's like she's got a gym buddy but it's not really a gym buddy yeah I mean it's a weird one though because he says they're still having a healthy sex life I say if, if you're um, if you're happy with the way things are obviously he knocks he's written in but I think it, crack on man it, it needs to be a conversation though of, again what does it mean to his wife I think the, the question like, for me would be is, is it a it, sexual relationship or, or is, is it, it an emotional an emotional connection um, if it's both um, I would potentially be slightly concerned if it's just sex um, but it's a really difficult situation because they've been together probably the majority most of their life um, they've built well 36 years yeah. married anyway yeah they've 
built a life together. They've had children. They have a home. They have grandkids. It's not something you can tear apart that easily. Um, and I think his partner's probably being quite selfish, to be honest. Yeah, possibly. But I, I, I look, my advice is this: if you're happy, I know he's obviously not because he's written in. But if you're fine with it, you're not affected. Your sex life's still good. Mm. She's happy. She's getting her rocks off there and with you. Crack on. Well, I know, but I, I think for me, and I don't know if this is more about it's me, community service, isn't it, for a widower? <laughs> it's uh, am I not enough? Yeah, see, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily um, think like that. I think if it was another guy, yeah, I'd be threatened. Hmm. But I think if you've got if you've got um, desires, I don't want to sort of minimalize them and minimize them and call them fetishes or kinks. But if you've got something that that, that really gets you off, that I just cannot provide, hmm. like I'm not a woman, I physically cannot provide being a woman in the bedroom for you. Hmm then crack on you can get it elsewhere but if you're going to like another bloke and I'm like listen I can give you everything look it's it's unless average he's, it's average unless he's okay it's sh- average in some countries in in some countries it's average he um and if, you, if she goes to another man I would be I would be like am I not enough but if she's going to another woman or if there's something I'm trying to think what there might be that maybe maybe there's like a kink that she really enjoys but it's like an absolute limit for me and I'm like mm. I absolutely will not do that then every now and then if she wants to go and do that with someone else I wouldn't be against it because I want her to enjoy it. Would you it. feel that way if it was a man? Yeah, if it was uh, if it was just like a sexual thing, there was all one right, thing so that say, he provided right. that I physically can't, and it was uh, it was not happening often, but just enough. All right, so say for example, you were, I can't even think of a kink in particular. No, I can't. But but um, if there was something that she really really enjoyed, really really enjoyed it. Well, I think again, and I was absolutely never going to do it. But then I think with their situation, I have to believe that he can't be unaware that she likes women because I can't imagine after 36 years of being together it's she's new. just suddenly started shagging another woman um, so I have to think that's been a part of their relationship which is why he seems so cool with it um, but then at the same time if he's aware of it why wasn't she more open about it from the off with? Um, so I think again it needs to be a conversation of what does it mean to her if it's strictly physical can it be something we can try as a freeway? Can we see if we can make it work in a poly yeah, is app? there a way I can join um, in? If it's emotional, then I have an issue with it, personally. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I would too. If that's, the, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Is it emotional or is it more? Yeah. Um, is it sex? Fine. I honestly, like I said, if there was... Like, she's a woman. I physically cannot be a woman for you in the bedroom. Mm you enjoy that that's going to get you off crack on it's really my fine as long concern, as you're not going there and not coming here as a result my only concern for him is if it isn't something that he's been aware of in the past and it is just suddenly she likes women that changes the whole scenario because does it now mean you're not as into me but then there's still a, it's a difficult one yeah so um, yeah I would just say to, it's just you need to have a very honest conversation I think the second it starts affecting your sex life is the, is the time mm-hmm. to really be concerned yeah but as long as your sex life still healthy and, and you're happy with that and you want your wife to be happy then I just I think fundamentally for me the whole point of a relationship is it's sort of a declaration to the world I'm with this person they're with me um, but that's in the, that's in a very romantic and monogamous sense there are polyamorous relationships there are purely sexual relationships yeah, there are many different variations no absolutely but I, I think that's not what they entered into and it's someone very late down the line going well now I want to introduce and that's where I have an issue with it because if, if that's what you're looking for that's what you should go and have it shouldn't be something you're now, you're now forcing onto your partner of 36 years possibly I think definitely the you know she could have had a conversation and said, look, I'm, I'm getting along with her really well, but like, really well. <laughs> um, can I have sex with her? Like, so, you know, like asking your mum if you can go out and play. You're like, please. I won't make a mess. I'll clean up after because ourselves. Because it's interesting he didn't word it as though she's been cheating on him. No, her. it's just been fiddling around with someone and then... But I, 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 that's what I find odd, because I think if, if my partner suddenly came to me and said... Oh, you know, I became friends with so and so. Well, I've started fucking her. Maybe I'd, I would have an issue with that. Maybe they went on Hindu. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe. We all know what happens. Drinks flow, pussies fly, tits are out. <laughs> so I've heard. It's how they happen up here. <laughs> I can't. I can't even say it with a straight no. face. No, but fair enough. It's very interesting. We have very different outlooks on on stag dudes. <laughs> Not even just stag dudes, but relationships. <laughs> no, I think. I think. You know, is it is it for me? No. Mm. No, I, 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 it's not. I'd, I'd quite like to be quite monog- monogamous. Yeah. But um, I certainly could understand the benefits to it. Yeah, I think just more than anything, it's so tough for that man because it's so far into their relationship. The thing together. is, it's, it's, think, he's sort of got no choice but to be understanding. You know, about he, ha- it. he has written in which suggests that there is an element of he's okay problems. With it. Well, no, I that he's not okay with it. Otherwise, he wouldn't mm. bring it up. He'd just be like. Oh, babe, I'm, I'm shagging the bird well, next door, well, and you no, just go, all right, I, fine. I think <laughs> what I, the way I read it anyway is that he's more confused about it rather than he's, that he's necessarily got a problem with it. Possibly, but I think that's, you know, as if it's confusion, as you sort of alluded to, that's not going to be questions that the Agony Aunt can answer, that we can answer as the Agony Aunt, because it's written to us that um, it's going to be a question that his no, wife can answer. I, I think there's a common theme we've sort of had for all of these is it's about having a very honest conversation with your partner. That's going to be the key to all of this. Yeah. Have it, have those talks. Yeah. It's tough. They are very tough to have. When yeah. you're revealing a part of yourself that oh, oh, up till now hasn't been part of the relationship, mm. it changes. It, it You're always worried. And because it can happen, it changes. Suddenly the person is like, well, that's not the person I'm dating. Yeah, I don't want to be a part of it. My question to you on that, just to take sort of a serious note for a second, is does that then make the person you've been in a relationship dishonest? Because no. they've not shared that with you from the beginning. No, I think it makes them human. Fair enough. It makes them, you know... No, and that, that, by the way, that's not me saying I think... No, no, you were just asking just the question. asking the question. I know you won't um, have to know that. Obviously, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the listeners should know. If you've not, there's lots of episodes to go and get to know us. Yeah, pretty no, well. I'd like to say that overall we're probably quite open and understanding people. Do you think it makes um, them dishonest? It would depend on what it is. Um, if it was something that would genuinely affect the relationship in terms of, or who you are as a person, and you've been holding something that's massive. So, like, say, like now after three years, my partner came to me and said, "By the way, I'm bisexual." Um, I would find it hard to believe that she didn't have those leanings when we got together. Well, I'd, I'd be, for me, it would then change the whole dynamic of For me, if, if my partner came to me and said I'm bisexual three years into the relationship, I'd suddenly be very upset with myself and how I presented. Because I'd think, why what, couldn't you tell, why me, couldn't you tell me earlier? What was yeah, it yeah. about me that you were worried about? Well, the question would then be, was it because you, but I wouldn't you, be you judging. weren't sure in yourself or was it because you didn't trust how but I wouldn't, I would I wouldn't be judging them for it as much as I'd be judging me for it. I think it'd be both for me. No, that's fair enough. I think for, for me, Not I'd necessarily be. judging them, but I'd want to understand why Why more than anything. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. And I think um, perhaps if, if... Let me ask you this though quickly. Because the thing is, I've actually had previous girlfriends that have gone on or that were always gay but didn't come out until a certain point um, there was one girl I was dating that came out gay while I was I'll with tell you her. this you've turned a lot um, you've turned a lot of women I did suddenly have this reputation of I turned women gay you went through like I wouldn't say it was like three on the bounce but it was like three out of five or something yeah where it was like straight 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 dates big gay yeah basically um, and the last one and I she sort of you were like a nice transition she sort. She just sort of said to me that she really wanted to be straight, um, and she said she met me, thought I was a lovely guy, and she said on paper it all worked, but it didn't, um, and it just crystallised for her that it wasn't a man she was looking for. No, no, that's, that's fair enough. I think, like I said, I think and it's for hard me, not to say that and feel you know, like we're Fuck, all. What did I do? Yeah, yeah we're all. <laughs> We're all human and we all have parts of ourselves that we are doubtful over. Yeah. Um, not doubtful over in ourselves, but doubtful over how people will see that. And it's it's mm. a more vulnerable aspect. And when you're with someone, 
there's a I think there's a golden period where the best time to tell someone. So first of all, you've got to find out whether you really want to be with them for the long haul. Because if you yeah. don't, obviously sharing that part of yourself with them is pointless. It's, mm. it's 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 a mute point. But once you're in it too long, there does become a point where you think like, well, shit, I haven't shared it now. Mm. I really should have. At this point, it does feel like maybe not. I like I said from the outside, I wouldn't see it as deception. I see it as humanity. I see it as vulnerability. But mm. from your own self, it does feel a bit like you're being dishonest. Like I really need to get this off. Yeah. Um, my chest. That's the thing. How far do you let it go until it's now dishonest that you're not? So for, for me, I would say somewhere between the sort of like depending on how frequently you're seeing each other. Mm. If you're seeing each other like every day, non-stop, and you've like practically moved in from the off, I would say you could go as early as like two or three months but I'll say generally speaking for most relationships the pace they progress for me there's a six to eight month period yeah. <clears throat> where I think after that point you know that you're in it you know that you want to be with them I, I think and it's still early enough that you can keep revealing parts of yourself and being vulnerable in new ways together mm. for me I think it depends on how big a part of you that is like so for example that girlfriend I just told you about Mm. she was open with me from the off that she was bisexual so then coming out and saying that she was fully gay for lack of a better phrase um, wasn't a massive yes you are gay not bi but full blown gay yeah that's probably where I got that phrase from to be fair Um, so that wasn't a massive shock whereas had she not told me and then to be fair I don't think we didn't date for that long but I think it goes um, back to just having an honest conversation because for me, if she comes to me and says, <clears throat> look, I'm, I'm gay, and, and then she mm. says to me, look, the truth is, I, I, I thought I was bi, I didn't tell you because I wasn't sure how you'd react because we were together and I didn't think mm. it was important. Um, but actually now I'm with you and I realise that it's not a man problem, it's not about who it is, it's about being a man is the issue, not the man themselves. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, and I'd sort of understand, I'd go, okay, no, fair enough, it's a big part of you, you were questioning it, you were very unsure of yeah, it. Yeah. And so if you, and certainly if you're unsure of it in yourself, mm. how are you going to share that? Like, how do you share this part, part with someone and go, no, absolutely, how do you, you know, in terms, of a, in terms of a presentation mm. point of view, how do you go to someone and say, look, I, you know, go, I've got something to tell you, and you go, okay, what is it? You go, well, I don't really know because I'm not really sure what it is, but yeah. there's something here, and you go, well, what's there? And you go, I don't really know. It's, it's more intimidating than when you're sure of it. Oh no, and it's I, intimidating them. No, absolutely, and I agree with you, and I think that's completely fair. But that's why I said it depends on how big a part of the person it is, because I think the bigger a part of you it is, the easier it will be to perhaps understand it and vocalise it. But the if it's a smaller part of yourself, like you say, you're not going to fully quite understand what it is to you, let alone how it's going to affect someone else or your relationship. Yeah, I think you also you're 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 um <clears throat> you're testing the waters, you know, like taking the buy thing. Mm. If you're bisexual, you know, the, let's face it, the truth is there's a lot of homophobes in this world. Yeah, and so you really want to test the waters with how comfortable they are. And there's a lot of people who are like, well, I don't mind it for other people, mm. but I don't want it anywhere in my inner circle. I think, and you've got to try and, and it's horrible to to think that there are people like that in the world. Absolutely. But there are, and you've got to try and figure out where that person stands on it. Yeah, I think for me, so like when that girl was really honest with me about it, it took away a lot of the insecurity around it because from the get go, it's like, look, this is who I am. So I can then go, all right, fair enough, and then I can learn who she is from there. Um, and it like like it. And then also there's the bloke blokey part of you that's like, oh fuck, does that mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's um, yeah. Like, <coughs> Look, I'm not, can I'm not, I just I be honest? Say it, but, we um, don't, we don't want that to be how our brains work. It just is. Yeah, there I was, don't there want was to a tiny that. part of me that was like, oh, fucking all right. If I'm um, if I'm dating a girl and she says I'm bi, <clears throat> it's not gonna it's not gonna come up straight away, and it's not gonna be mm. a thing that dominates because I respect people as people. Mm. But there is at some point the thought's gonna cross my mind and go could be a threesome on the cards yeah, and look absolutely. I hate when the thought comes in the other part of my brain goes you fucking disgusting pervert she's more yeah. than bisexual she's a woman you've got yeah. to respect her and she's in a and relationship actually, with you but that doesn't stop the thought coming no and the thing is the fact I ended up dating the woman tells you that I obviously thought a lot of her as a person and she was a really nice woman or oh, you really wanted a threesome and then, <coughs> the thing is I found her sexually attractive I wanted to have sex with her so yeah if the, if another attractive woman was involved fantastic um, but when she told me more than anything I felt honoured she felt how would you react able to be honest with me how would you react 
like how would you handle it because I know what the answer is going to be but mm. how would you handle it if she came to you and said <clears throat> I want a threesome mm. I want it to be another guy oh, oh do you know what it would be a deal breaker no I know you'd say no I'm not asking if you do it but I'm asking how would you I would again it'd be a, a conversation for me of understanding one why they want it what it means to them uh, <coughs> if you want to have sex with another man I feel less confident in what we have as a relationship um, and that would be my main concern behind it because I and it would be the same argument for the reverse if I wanted to have a threesome with my partner with another woman it's the same thing with her in reverse in reality it's yeah am I not good enough it, yeah and that would be my issue with it I think a lot of these relationship issues do boil down to that whenever you are you enough for the other person there's a common theme <clears throat> of am I enough and it's, it plays into all our insecurities and look the truth is in any relationship you can't be enough in all ways for another person because you are not perfect, you are not complete as a human being. So there are certain things that I can't do for my partner and that can be... And listen, bro, I'm more than happy to pick up the slack, I've told you many times. <laughs> and there's certain things she can't do for me and Jake. And again, I'm more than happy to pick up the slack. Especially a stag do, is more than happy to pick up the slack. I'm going to um, get, get on, I'm going to see if the group still exists for the stag do and I'm going to message sure her and be like, does. guys... Please tell me some of you are having sex because I don't want to be. I don't want this to be a thing that we want to start doing. No one had sex with each other. Yeah, um, but no. I've, I've... Who do you think did it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's a discussion for the stag do group. Um, but, uh, we'll see the photos, I'm sure. But with um, going back to what we were saying, I've sort of lost my train of thought. What were we saying? I don't know. Do you know what I've got? I've got one to finish. Um, I sort of wish I'd done the cup of tea one. Now I didn't realize I had deep we were going to get into that but it's a really good honest conversation yeah. and I, I, I'm really grateful for it um, let's let's I've got one for so um, Dear Crossing Swords um, th again there's not so much a question out of this as a here's my problem yeah. you tell me what to do with it so Dear Crossing Swords my boyfriend my boyfriend talks too much during sex we've been together for a year and recently he started <laughs> talking to me while we're intimate now this is where it gets weird talking sex perfectly normal at first it was just really uh, everyday stuff like what he wants for dinner bit odd but this is where it gets good then essentially he began ranting she said do you know how hard it is to climax while listening to someone talk about how many bands have produced quote disappointing second albums i just don't know if i can go on like this now i like a moan but it doesn't sexually turn me on i've got to say that when i'm in when i'm in having sex i'm in the moment I I'm not thinking about like think, oh how shit was that follow up I think album. You've probably sort of, my instant reaction when you started saying this person talks about things during sex is they obviously struggle with intimacy because they want to fill the gap they want to take away there the is intimacy. sometimes a silence during sex or there's moments of not real, when I do it real intimacy where you might lock eyes with the person and much like we're doing now sort of the gravity of the situation sort of suddenly enters the room or enters the moment and and I, it's vulnerable yeah it's it incredibly is vulnerable. vulnerable but and it's I, it's when you're sharing it with someone if you if you trust them and you love them mm. and you care for them it's a really nice vulnerability to share that moment but with someone. i would probably imagine somewhere with her partner he has insecurities or an embarrassment factor when he has sex that he feels he needs to fill that moment that it's, silence it's what um, he's filling it with like there's dirty talk and there's like or, or even really compliments no, no, like baby you're so beautiful I really you're so good no but that's but the thing if, like, if it was like he was calling her a filthy slag while banging away that would be obviously he's got issues with boundaries but the no, fact but the fact he's, he's like, talking about he's there full on thrust he's like oh fucking Sopranos ending was shit do you know what I mean like, I've fucking invested six years of my life and then they just cut to black mid scene absolutely mm. how are you doing that in that moment how well, are you possibly I'm, that I don't know there's obviously also I actually like the Sopranos there, ending, is, a, there, there. is a deeper issue there Tony died um, for those who don't disagree for those who disagree fuck yourself you're wrong anyway um, 
But yeah, I, I think there's a deeper issue there. He probably has underlined insecurities that he feels he needs to fill that. I know, but it's what thoughts. it's what he's feeling. No, absolutely. It's not. But I, like, don't, I, I get the insecurities and feeling the moment. The dirty talk side of it, I don't think comes into it because I don't think that's what dirty talk is. Dirty talk is something two partners do to keep each other revved up and you keep the moment fueled and stuff like that. That's not what he's doing. He's essentially trying to distract from what's no, happening. No, he's padding, he's feeling so dead he, air. So he doesn't feel like what he's doing or bringing to the table is enough. Is enough. So that's the issue they need to resolve. She needs to say to him, shut the fuck up. I love having sex with you. You're ruining it. Or not. maybe not ruining it, it's probably too harsh. No, fuck that, you're ruining it. But you are ruining the moment, the intimacy. I'll tell you now, um, I don't want to sit and listen to you moan about bands having shit second albums. Yeah. In a normal I mean, room. In fairness to him, when you're balls he's got deep a in very me, good point, but it's not. But for when that you're moment. balls deep in me, I certainly don't want to be no, hearing about it. Absolutely, and I think so. That's the thing. She needs to have a very blunt and honest conversation. I can say now him. that wasn't happening um, on the stag do. Those conversations were not <laughs> taking place no, there. No, and that's the kind of place where you would discuss things like shit second albums. Yeah. So no, I would. I would say it just needs to again an open, honest conversation. Telling me needs to shut up enjoy the moment he needs to get over himself maybe they need to bring in a, a bit of a bit of a bit of kink and she can gag him bring in talk, dirty talk bring, like say look if you need to talk while we're having sex talk to me about how good it feels or you know that you think I look good or I think I just like gag that. him I didn't want to hear him <laughs> there's um, always a chance you could you could transition you know we love a good segue on the pod mm. imagine that oh babe you're so beautiful you're so good at sex I love it so much didn't you Unlike love that James Blunt album yeah. <laughs> Oh, baby, this is my favourite position. Do you know what? It's just like, um, f- uh, you know, For Your Eyes Only. That's my favourite Bond film. What about yours? <laughs> Do you know, it's just easy to slip into it. For Your Eyes Only was the only Bond film I could think of, by the way. It's not my favourite. No, but anyway, I would, yeah, I would just say he's clearly got insecurities that what he's bringing to the table during sex isn't enough, and I think that's what they need to get to the what do you, Let me ask you this. What do you think? So you're there, and I realise, you know, trust me, I know you've never had any complaints in the bedroom. I, I read all your reviews on Google. <laughs> to be fair, there's not a lot of reviews. No, I, I put most of them. But <laughs> it's all those stag dudes we keep going on. Do you know what? There are some things that come up that you're just never going to get over, no. and that is going to be forever part of yeah, our yeah. lives. Now you realise the stag dude thing yeah. is just that's beyond the pod. Yeah. The stag dude thing is just sticking. Yeah. But um, what would you? What do you think for you would be the worst thing that your fiance could say during sex? Is it him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. What, what's the worst thing to you non-sex related? If you started talking about a previous partner. Yeah. Oh, so-and-so never used to do that or something like that. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, why are you even thinking about them? Or I used to like it when so-and-so did this or like anything like that. Would you really... Would you be ever... The worst thing would be if she said the old partner's name. Would you be ever upset if your partner, not necessarily during the act, but possibly during the act, said to you, oh, do you know what? Such and such, or one of my exes, let's say we don't name them, but let's say mm. she said one of my exes used to do this. Um, you know, I quite liked it. Would you feel upset that they're thinking about them? Or would you think, no, she wants, she really likes me and she wants our sex life to be the best it can. And for her, that means incorporating different I elements. I would say that's the, the way I would take it because, I mean, I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail about my relationship on this podcast. But me and my partner, no, you can read the blog. we are quite open when it comes to talking about sex, what we like, don't like. Um, we've had conversations outside of sex in terms of her sex life with her previous partner um, and stuff like that. So we've both been open about what we've experienced, didn't like, did like, and we've sort of gone from there. And when we've had sex, we we won't like, it's not like a post-match uh, breakdown. Analysis. But yeah, we'll talk about I did things. always find it weird that you brought Alan Shearer into the bedroom with you. I don't. The man's a hero to and me. He just kept putting the little screen, the little highlight marker, the little <laughs> lines, tracking where Gary you went. Gary Neville just banged on about Man United the whole time. Graham Sooners <laughs> being like, his form's good, but Pop was terrible in the middle of the park. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think um, you probably asked the wrong person that question because I have quite an open dialogue with my partner when it comes to... With no, sex. but I've, I've asked the um, right person that question. Um, so no, I, I, I personally believe um, having because I've had these conversations with people in the past where them and their partners just don't talk about sex and for me 
it's not the most important thing. It's a big part. It is a massive part of your relationship because it's the most intimate part of the relationship you and your partner will ever have. It's the most vulnerable you'll um, ever be together. Exactly. So for me, why don't you want it to be as enjoyable and as fulfilling for both of you as you as really possible? care about each other, I think the more you open about it, the more you normalise sex, the more you Absolutely. don't taboo um, it. And when you're when you're normalising it, what happens is you're able to bring things up and rather than going, Oh, that's a bit of you know, kinky, I'm not really mm. they they're able to go, Well, it's not really for me, but babe, if it's gonna make your life better yeah, Fucking absolutely. And um, one of my biggest issues in the past was I used to find sex quite embarrassing. I was insecure about it, didn't feel like I could bring a lot to the table. And it was made worse that I was with people that just didn't want to talk about sex. Um, and the most refreshing thing about being with my partner when we first got together was that she was very much willing and open to talking about sex. And it took all the pressure away. And I could just enjoy what we were doing. I didn't have to worry about oh she enjoyed it it was because she'll tell you yeah so and also there's nothing wrong by the way I know it's all meant to be in the heat of the moment and especially mm. there is nothing wrong with saying to your partner at the end of the at the end of the game did you enjoy that well, not did you enjoy that but if you if you didn't saying do you know what I, I didn't really like when you did that because yeah. yeah do you know what on the one hand you're like it is crushing in the moment but what it mm. means is next time they can change it and they can bring their A game you can say do you know what babe actually uh, if you did this it would be better mm. and it means that next time sex is enjoyable for both of you whereas if you carry on saying nothing it's not enjoyable for also, anyone also I think you need to allow humour to be in the room yeah. when you're having sex because yes. there are awkward moments there's moments yes. where something might not quite work or you know it doesn't quite line up or whatever so you need to be able to approach it with a bit of humour and humility and just not yes. not take yourself too seriously sex, sex like life it shouldn't be its own extension of this small set of emotions it's the mm. whole range it's the whole spectrum absolutely I'll tell you what, I'm quite pleased with this part. It's definitely not the tone oh, I wanted, no. that I thought it would take, but I'm pleased it has. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm not, because I think for me, too many, it, we are very prudish overall in this country, mm, I would say. 100%. Um, I'm quite fortunate that I've always come from a family where we were quite open about stuff. It didn't mean like, I knew what my parents were doing or whatever, but it, if I ever had any questions, my parents would always answer in the best way they could. My sister was always the same. We've always had quite an open dialogue, so it's something I'm comfortable with, and I mm. think more people should be. I think it's too big a part of our lives. To Although be. I do, I do appreciate if our listeners don't want to jump in at the deep end and start asking their parents how often they're doing it. <laughs> you can leave that to be. Well, no, you I don't believe that. How often my parents were doing you it? You were the one having honest yeah. conversations with them. No, but it was more in terms of my curiosities about our sexual organs, I just questions in general I don't like the way you said ah like a collective thing <laughs> this ain't the stag do bro, bro keep it in your pants one. keep we're it in one. your pants okay? particularly at stag do you save that one. shit for the stag <laughs> but no I'm quite pleased with how this has gone no but also um, two things I'd like to I'd like to ask you to write to us about tweet us at swords crossing yeah. um, use the hashtag dear crossing swords uh, yes pog, uh, f- comment on our Instagram post when this goes up um, at, at crossing swords underscore podcast or on Facebook again comment post um, first of all tell us uh, have you ever been on a stag do or a hen do and people have hooked up yeah. with each other in like same sex yeah, that's even not, not but I just want to know I just got to know if this I'm is just like curious if I want to know if our stag do's were the anomalies or whether that stag do was the anomaly yeah. we've got to know we've got to collate the data yeah. but also play the long game message us at uh, crossingswords19 at gmail.com yeah. um, message us for Dear Agony you know Dear Crossing Swords yeah um, because we'll do another one you want us to answer we'll do another one obviously we've just done yeah. one so it won't be for a while but mm. we'll, we'll get to it so obviously if it's an emergency consult Google or your doctor don't come to us if it's like you need an answer then mm. but if you're happy to wait a bit or something's happening for someone else and you want to hear our opinion on it yeah Tell us that we know we've all got friends. You know, a friend of mine was going through this. A friend of mine did that. We've all got those friends. Yeah. Tell us about those friends of yours. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> no, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I, I think that's a... Um, Great way to say Yeah, it was, it was very much more... It's much more. It was it, a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. Oh, absolutely. This we was really, to be a silly... We really cracked open the, the nut on that one. We really went for the heart of it. We nutted hard. 
Yeah, and it wasn't even a stag do. No one's even getting married. It's no. insane. Um, but no, we hope we've kept you uh, entertained and illuminated. Yes, and um, I think just just the, the one thing to take away from this is is um, we've mentioned a few times that Vic has a fiance. Yes. So a wedding might not be imminent, but is on the cards. It is on the cards. And I just I just want him to know. Just prepping now the kind of things that might happen on this stage, the activities that might take place. I'm just telling you now, I'm not sucking off either you or Ash on the stag do. No, bro, you're the groom. <laughs> you don't do the sucking, you get sucked. <laughs> oh, look, no, it's I'll be, be honest, <laughs> I, was, I was first introduced to the idea of, of, of stag do sex about an hour ago. <laughs> But I'm very much invested. Well, not even an hour ago. I'm very much invested. I'm all in now. And I think I've got a pretty good grasp on it. I think you know what? You keep choosing the worst choice of words. <laughs> Grasping. I think, I think the groom receives. What? Gets, I think the groom gets pleasured. I'm getting bummed on my stag <laughs> You get pleasured. But, like, you know, you don't have to do any of the work. It will all come to you. <laughs> I was just saying, if you're not, if you don't want to take it, <laughs> as the groom, you don't have to. Oh, you don't have to make you. that compromise. Thank we'll you. find someone else. <laughs> right, and on the on that note, uh, I think we're probably going to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Take not care as much of fun yourselves. as a stag do, but pretty fun. But as always, take care of yourselves and stay safe. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>